Hey, we are off and running, everybody, on a very rare and special Monday edition of Thoroughbred Action here from Gulfstream Park West. Jason Blewett joining you from our clubhouse studios. We run nine on the card today. We welcome back. He may have been the Preakness hero, even though he didn't finish the race, per se, with the jockey aboard. Bodie Express back in race number two, a highly anticipated return to action for him. We've got nine races on the card, perfect weather. I'll have the weather, the track conditions, and then we'll have, as a group, a whole lot of Pete Aiello from the booth. And as promised, we've got some fast and firm racing conditions, cloudy skies, and we could turn our attention to race one of nine as we get things underway on the turf. In fact, at a mile and a 16th, these are three and up claimers that have never won three. Claiming tags are 10,000. Monstrous favorite towards the outside, the eight blasphemy, three to five, and claimed by trainer Yvonne Belsor. Here's, here's track enhancer Pete Aiello with the call. Racing at GPW. Level beginning from the center. Aston Answered is the first to get underway. Up on the outside, Blasphemy from between horses. Unionizer down at the inside. It's Seatbelt moving up while a bit headstrong. So Seatbelt and Aston Answered go 1-2 from the class dropping. Unionizer away third. He's now marching forward. Blasphemy gets exactly the spot he wants. Fourth behind the speed. A gap of two to Blue Sky Kitten. Then Can't Trump Kitten and Silver Beach. At the inside, it's America's Samard second last. And the early trailer is Yellow Lion as they round the first turn. Up front, Aston answered a length and a half better than Unionizer in second. Seatbelt is third. Blasphemy in no hurry. He's fourth. Gap of two to the inside and Blue Sky Kitten from fifth and Can't Trump Kitten. A length and a half in front of the gray Silver Beach. Second last is America's Samard and the trailer remains Y'all Lion. Inside five furlongs left to go and it's Aston answered on top a length and a half. Unionizer, Unionizer the nearest pursuer second toward the outside. Blasphemy creeps a touch closer. Seatbelt is down toward the inside. Can't Trump Kitten is up to fifth, passing a retreating Blue Sky Kitten as Silver Beach improves at the rail. America's Samard three wide, and the trailer is Yaw Lion as they swing around the far turn. Less than three-eighths of a mile to go. They haven't reeled in. Aston answered yet. He leads by a length and a half. Three wide. Can't Trump Kitten. Unionizer tries to go with him. Blasphemy is called on. He's not really responding yet. Down at the inside and seat belt. America's Samard is wide off the corner, and they're at the top of the stretch. Aston answered. Still the target. Can't Trump Kitten charge. Charging now, and he's up to challenge for the lead. Unionizer is with him. Blasphemy at a one pace. Final 16th of a mile, and Can't Trump Kitten rising to the occasion. Can't Trump Kitten wins it and wins going away. It's going to be close for second, but Seatbelt gets second ahead of America's Samard third. Blue Sky Kitten finished fourth. Well, the eight Blasphemy who took a pretty big drop to 10,000 just was on empty basically from the quarter pole home and this race turned out to be a bit of an upset there at nine dollars and sixty cents on the outside run of the 10 can trump kitten veteran rider roberto alvarado jr and trainer terry pompey hooking up from the outside let's head to the main track race number two this is our main event on the day nice to have bodie express creating some national hype here at gpw a lot of people watching him he's a huge favorite facing three as we send it back over to pete and they're off. Bodie Express away very quickly and with Jaramillo atop. From the outside of Fleet Moment is now second in September 10 between horses. Armando R, the stretch runner, is last of the four as they charge into the first turn. Inside position and the lead for the comebacking favorite Bodie Express as Jaramillo takes hold of him, trying to slow him down on the top end. Vasquez will have none of that as September 10 is right up alongside. Torres back to Fleet Moment off to race in third, and he's three clear of Armando R, who's last of the four as they complete the opening quarter and head into the backstretch. Up front, Bodie Express now struts his stuff. He's now about five furlongs from home and a length and a quarter in front. Three wide now second is a fleet moment alongside September 10 and still at the back is Armando R. They head to the half mile grounds. In fact, four and a half furlongs left to go and Bodie Express still the target. September 10 is still second. A fleet moment drops back again. He's now third and Armando R is last. Inside half a mile from home as they leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. So far, so good for Bodie Express with all the eyes and all the money on. He's three furlongs from home and a length and a half in front. September 10 struggles to keep up second. A fleet moment on a rebid third. Armando R has been last throughout. And Jaramillo lets Bodie Express roll a little bit here. He's a quarter of a mile from home and three on top. September 10 is second. A fleet moment and Armando R next as they're at the top of the stretch. Bodie Express less than a quarter of a mile from the money and well clear 
clear out here. Armando R down at the inside trying to put in a late run. He's now second. The other two will battle for third. Final eighth of a mile. Bodie Express, welcome back to the winner's circle, big guy. And welcome to Gulfstream Park West. It's Bodie Express from the Triple Crown Series to GPW and a three-length win. Armando R second, well clear of September 10, third. A fleet moment, finish fourth. Well, they went after him early, September 10 in particular, but Bodie Express was just too much race horse. And good to see this uh, uh, snake bitten, hard luck cult by Bodie Meister back in action this afternoon. His first start, of course, since the Preakness. Anxious to see what the future holds. Do you run him back in a stake race? Do you play it a little more conservative? Time will tell. In the meantime, though, Gustavo Delgado and Misael Jaramillo hook up with a popular Bodie Express. The best chance for success begins with a solid foundation. At Hardacre Farm, early personal one-on-one -on -one care starts the journey to becoming a champion. Bred to leading stallions, our mares represent the highest standards, Hardacre Farm's signature in the breeding industry. Based in Ocala, Florida, breeder and owner Amy Tarrant has inspired excellence throughout her entire career. In your quest for success, start with Hardacre Farm, breeding the champions of tomorrow. And welcome back, everybody. Race number three, seven and a half furlongs, three and up claimers. Claiming tags are 10,000. And we had a claim in this race. The number four, remember the main, was claimed by Yvonne Belsor. And they're off. Level beginning. Soon after, Hot and Heavy tried to get to the top from between horses. Remember the main GQ cover up has speed and completely bonkers. The veteran wants to get some forward position in the charge to the first turn. Completely bonkers along the rail. GQ cover up on the stretch out is right alongside. These two have moved ahead of Hot and Heavy, who now drops over to race in third. Happy Hat is on from fourth. Remember the main is fifth. Down at the inside goes Arts Table from sixth. Seventh inside is Grand Tapoy. Dunn acting is eighth. And the trailer is Discreet Heat. Ninth and last at about seven lengths off the lead as they head down the backstretch. Up front, completely bonkers, put into play today by Marcos Manessas, but he has an early tussle with an outside running GQ cover-up who now moves forward to take a clear lead. Hot and Heavy is watching the action unfold under Jeffrey Sanchez, third about three lengths behind. Gap of another two and a half to remember the main who's outside of Happy Hat. Then it's Art's table. Trying to move in from the back is Dunn acting alongside Grant Tapoy and Discreet Heat at the back. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Three furlongs left to go. Up front, GQ cover-up has challenges on both sides. Completely bonkers and hot and heavy. These two, three across the course. Four ahead of Remember the Main. Then it's back to Dunn Acting who finds his best ride. And he comes on next and they're at the top of the stretch. Out in the center, hot and heavy has now gone on to take the lead. Remember the Main charging at him from the inside and completely bonkers. Final 16th of a mile. Hot and heavy trying to get home. Remember the Main surging at him. Remember the Main's going to make this close. Hot and heavy digging in and hot and heavy's hanging on. Remember the Main second GQ cover up was third and then it was done acting been a good couple of days for jockey jeffrey sanchez who is a very strong finisher and he needed every ounce of strength to get up in deep stretch with the 10 hot and heavy nice job too by the public making this horse uh, two to one he paid over six dollars slightly over six dollars to win from the outside stall 10 for trainer oscar gonzalez in the third Let's move on to the fourth race here, main tracking it as we start this six-figure jackpot Rainbow Six. Claiming tags in this main dash are 10,000, and we go back to Pete for the call. And they're off. For the inside, Awesome Buzz gets the first call. Taylor's initiation is going to run with him early. High approval and unequal away in the top flight. So the four favorites out, one, two, three, four, as they complete a 16th of a mile. Away in fifth is Segus Mundo, then Starship Fonzie, and over Salty is last. Jeffrey Sanchez puts Awesome Buzz on the lead here to the half-mile grounds and leads by a length and a half. Taylor's initiation is second, unequal on the outside, third, high approval, fourth. Segus Mundo is back to fifth ahead of Starship Fonzie, and over Salty is last. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Three furlongs left to go. Awesome buzz in front three parts of a length. Mitchell getting after Taylor's initiation at the 5 16th, still second. Three wide while third is unequal, two better than high approval. Segus Mundo running home a bit with a quarter of a mile left to get. Awesome buzz is only a neck on top. Taylor's initiation taking a shot on the outside with three 16ths to go. These two have kicked well clear of the others. Now there's an eighth of a mile left. Taylor's initiation on the outside of Awesome Buzz. Taylor's 
initiation for the lead. Awesome Buzz battles right back. 16th to go. Awesome Buzz, Taylor's initiation comes again, but Sanchez had something up his sleeve, and Awesome Buzz went all the way. Taylor's initiation second, seconds Mundo third, and high approval ran for it. And once again, Jeffrey Sanchez and his strength on display, just refusing to lose on the rail with the one awesome buzz. Top connections with Jack's a better farm and trained by Ralph Nix and very determined was this cult by awesome, of course. Here's the fifth already time for the late pick five and a little carryover action up for grabs. Pretty big pool, well over 100 grand as we start the sequence on the turf at seven and a half furlongs. Two-year-old maiden claimers here on the grass and the tags are 20,000. And they're off. Good start. The doer hits the ground running. The blessed one from the far outside gate trying to get over. Ugo, I go away in the top flight. And here's El Gran Cacao who made the start today. And he's marching forward. From behind the speed goes Gone Angels away in early fifth. Then it's Bambino. Bambino's about five lengths behind. Wide on the first turn was Wild Fox. The two at the back are RS Warrior and Macho Doro. So as they charge around the first turn, Al Gran Cacao comes away with the lead and leads the doer by a length. On the outside, that's a Wild Fox from third. Over there, fourth, the Bless One. Fifth at the inside, Ugo Igo. Then back to Big Treasure. He races in the two path with Gone Angels for company toward the rail. It's a length and a half then to Commanders at 10 ahead of Bambino and El Duque. Still at the back, Macho Doro and Ares Warrior. They're half a mile from home, and now Gran Cacao and Santiago Gonzalez still call the shots. From second, Wild Fox. From third, the Doer. Making ground while fifth is Big Treasure. He's clothed ground nicely for Aramir. He's only about five lengths behind at this stage. The rest start to string out as Bambino tries to get underway, and they round the far turn. El Gran Cacao still the target. Second, Wild Fox. Third, the Doer. Hugo I go fourth. Back to fifth and driven is uh, Big Treasure. Quarter of a mile left to get off the turn in the stretch drive. El Gran Cacao tries to go the distance here. He's now an eighth of a mile from home and he's three on top. Wild Fox is there. Second down the center. Commander's intent is coming on with Hugo I go and duck to the inside. Big Treasure. Big Treasure finishing up at El Gran Cacao. El Gran Cacao almost home. Big Treasure lunging. El Gran Cacao. Big Treasure on the inside. Photo finish. Too tight to call. Wow, this was a crazy finish, nearly a dead heat. I mean, another millisecond, and Big Treasure may have dead heated, or at the very least may have gotten the maiden win outright, but the wire came when it did, and the number eight, El Gran Cacao, $30.20 for trainer Juan Andreas Rodriguez, veteran rider Santi Santiago Gonzalez, and the winner, a two-year-old by Jack Milton in the fifth. Bombs away as we close out that early pick five and take another time out. We'll be back with the sixth, late pick four. So stay with us. And Go Zipper is pulling away. Go Zipper blows them away with an eye opening performance. And let's get them back on the dirt here. And a hearty welcome back to this Monday edition of Thoroughbred Action. Race number six on the card is a three and up Philly and Mare, $35 to $30,000 claimer. And they're off. The Sano duo away first and second, Paula, Andrea, and Yako, but here's Corey Gal put into play early, and she'll lead narrowly as they run to the opening furlong. Paula, Andrea is away in second, Yako is now third, down at the inside, Creative Award just took fourth. Mrs. Chapman is back to fifth, and the two at the back don't lose hope, and Valley Girl. They head to the half mile point, and it's Luca Panici and Corey Gal calling the shots, they're in front a length and a half. Racing in second is Paula, Andrea, Creative Award at the inside third, followed fourth by Yako, three clear of don't lose hope, then Valley Girl at the back with Mrs. Chapman. Three furlongs left to go, and Paula Andrea and Hyro bidding up on the outside to take on and go by Corey Gal with Creative Award looming a threat from third. Yako is wide while fourth. The rest are too far back with a quarter of a mile left to get. It's Creative Award issuing the challenge to Paula Andrea now with a quarter of a mile left to go. Paula Andrea cuts the corner and tries to find under pressure. On the outside, and Creative Award is right alongside. These two have kicked away. Paula Andrea's got a kick, and she's turned away the challenge of Creative 
Executive Award with Corey Gal back third. 16th to go. Paula Andrea clear to the line. And Paula Andrea and Jairo Rendon kick off the pick four with a three-length win. Creative Award is second. Corey Gal hangs on to third. Yako finish fourth. The number four, Paula Andrea, was up close and prominent throughout. I still feel this is a main track in which you want to be involved and you really want to be in the first flight. And she was able to basically skip along the rail in the stretch for trainer Antonio Sano and jockey Jairo Rendon. Let's turn our attention to race seven, outside of Bodie Express in the second. This is my favorite race on the card. I mean, this is a wintertime type maiden turf race for two-year-old fillies. We'll go with 12, and we go back to Pete. And they're up. Level beginning. Ami 10 commences nicely, and Ami 10 goes looking for the lead from the center. Miss My Macho also has some speed. Up on the outside goes Sweden into the top flight. On the far outside, Twilight Galaxy looking to get over and the charge around the first turn. The early trailer is better with age. They make their way now into that first turn and keyed up and loose up front. The leader now and moving to the lead is Cheermeister to lead by a length and a half. Sweden is second, Ami 10 is now third. Over there, racing in fourth is better with age as main attraction gets by her. Miss My Macho is three wide. Lady Panda's four wide. Then it's Seagal. The Pletcher duo follow them. Lemon Sita and Interest wide on the course in trying to move up from there is Miss Cheney. And then it's a gap of six to the trailer. Lemon Sita, who now drops back last inside half a mile from home. And up front, it's Cheermeister still in front and still in front by two and a half. Main attraction second, better with age third. Lady Panda picks it up on the outside. She's now three wide and up into fourth, back to fifth, and Ami 10, then Sweden. Interest tries to rally home with toward the inside Twilight Galaxy. Miss My Macho not firing. Seagal has dropped back, and Lemon Sita tries to catch up from the back as Cheermeister bids to go the distance here. Less than a quarter of a mile to go. Cheermeister still has the lead, but Lady Panda is a threat on the outside with an eighth of a mile left to go. Lady Panda now blows by Cheermeister, who tries to kick for more. It's Lady Panda in front. Cheermeister fighting hard, but second best, well clear of the others. Oh, Lady Panda drifted badly. Lady Panda. Wow, that was really, really. As Lady Panda won the race, but she drifted about seven lanes inside and almost had a situation with Cheermeister. There'll be an inquiry into that. Well, to say this seventh race was eventful might be the understatement of the season here at Gulfstream West. And truth be told, I mean, the 12 Lady Panda obviously had to come down. And I always say it, horses will run and like to run towards open space. And with that portable rail dropping off, I mean, she nearly eliminated the number two Cheermeister. She had to come down. I still feel bad for the connections and anybody that backed her because she was going to win. In the meantime, though, with the DQ, the number two Cheermeister, gets the maiden victory first time out Philly by Bodie Meister for Ray Lou Gutierrez and trainer Armando De La Serta. and that is seven down if you're keeping score two to go on this Monday edition of Thoroughbred Action back with the late double after this whether you're at home or at the track. Have a stake in the race when you bet with ExpressBet. Sign up for an ExpressBet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign-up bonus. One final race on the main track, and it's coming up in Monday's 8th. We'll go two turns here over the dirt at a mile. These are three and up $16,000 claimers. And they're off. Good beginning for the favorite Zalza. Haramil hustling him to try to get the early lead from Will Runaway, who comes away in second. Far outside, my interest going to be spun very wide as they stack and pack behind Zalza. Zalza around the turn with the advantage. Will Runaway on the outside is second. Down to the inside, Chase Runner third. Thought out flying is in tight while checking off heels. Out wide on the course, and my interest. And at the back is the trailer, the Duke of Monroe. They race into the backstretch now, and Zalza and Haramil have rail position and the lead. Well, Runaway is second on the outside. Quasar Moon third, only a half length off the leader. My interest is next. Chase Runner is at the rail with flat out flying between horses at the 5 eighths. And then it's a gap of another four to the trailer, Duke of Monroe. 
They head to the half mile point. No change in the plot. Zolza still leads, still getting pace pressure from Will Runaway on the outside. Third at the inside and chase runner Quasar Moon is back to fourth. He's lost a bit of ground, then flat out flying third last. My interest is second last and still at the back is Duke of Monroe. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Less than three furlongs to go. Up front, it's still Zolza and Haramiel. They're at the five sixteenths and lead three parts of a length. On the outside, Will Runaway is there. Second, flat out flying starts to roll. Pink blinkers on the far outside within two lengths of the lead as Zolza needs to find a bit more here. Off the turn and the stretch drive. Zolza's put to pressure. Flat out flying down the stand side. Coming on, Chase Runner is loose. And he's charging as they've got to Zolza. Final eighth of a mile, Chase Runner and Lionel Reyes now striding forward to take the lead. Flat out flying, can't get him, and Zolz is back to third. It's Chase Runner in an upset to win by two and a half. Second flat out flying, third Zolz, a fourth will run away, and then Quasar move. Well, we've basically run 11 full cards here this meet at GPW, and it's been a season thus far in Miami Gardens, very robust to say the least, with double digit winners. In the case of the two chase runner, you had trainer Laura Cesaris, who's been quietly on a good rundown on this circuit, and a uh, cult by Big Brown with jockey Lionel Reyes. Lionel picking up his 12th win of the meet, 17 and change on chase runner, the upsetter in the eighth. And we can move on to race number nine. Our six-day racing week comes to an end with this maiden claimer. These are two-year-olds. Claiming prices are $20,000 on the turf. And runners away. Good start inside for Jefe Grande up in the center. Fayez with King of Ranch moving up on the outside. Fayez and King of Ranch kick on from free away in third. Wild Go is out of there fourth. Then comes the gray Irish expectations. After a smooth getaway, Jefe Grande is down toward the inside, saving ground with a bit green, angling for racing room and on heels was fast Willie. He uh, did himself no favors on that corner. Meanwhile, that was Mayito who slid through inside. Followed next by Pure Crazy Dude. Then it's Translate Slowly. Out the back door early are Castaño and Feisty Kitten. 25 seconds flat for the opening quarter as they head down the backstretch. With the advantage, it's Fayez by an King of Ranch alongside second, racing in third. That's three off Rio, three wide. Back to fourth goes Fast Willie. Then Irish Expectations. Jefe Grande has dropped back a touch. He's only a length better than Naito. Pure Crazy Dude is three wide, then Translate Slowly. Still uh, at the back are Wild Go, Feisty Kitten, and Castaño. They swing around the far turn now. About three furlongs left to go. King of Ranch in the two path. Fayez fights to hold it. 3-0-3 wide. These three have kicked on. Three better than Fast Willie, who's a length and a half in front of a driven Maito. The rest will have to hurry up, led by Irish Expectations and they're at the top of the stretch. From between horses, King of Ranch is up to collar a short lead. Toward the inside, Fayez is boxing on second down the stand side and translates slowly. 3 is still right there and Irish Expectations charging home. Final 16th of a mile. Who do you like here? Irish Expectations on the stand side. Closing good ground. And Irish Expectations in a big upset. Closer for second. Mejito with Translate slowly on the outside. Well, congratulations to all the winners today, and it was really nice. I know it was only a four-horse field, and he paid 220, but it was good seeing Bodie Express come back. And although they pushed him through that first opening quarter, it was really great seeing him return a winner for very classy trainer Gustavo Delgado and Amisel Jaramillo. We'll see what the future holds. Do they run him back in an allowance race and play things a little conservative, or... Do you jump right back into graded stakes company? Time will tell. We'll watch him because he's a talented cult, and we will see all of you this coming Thursday here at GPW with a first race post of about 105. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Hit the hay. 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 Well, I'm tired. Let me tell you, Jack, I'm so tired.